My title this morning is The Name Says It All. Thanksgiving. That, that's it. Thanksgiving. I wrote this down. So don't get sidetracked by the turkey or the Indians and pilgrims or being ready to catch those Black Friday sales. Keep your eyes on the goal. The most important thing of the holiday can't be purchased with money. God has anything he wants. He owns it all. It's a grateful heart that God is looking for. Thanksgiving was meant to be a time to thank God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.3, 3, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to, disobedient to parents. And I'm going to stop here. Unthankful. Mm. Yes. It's part of the last day's generation. I'm thankful. You can read the rest. It talks about unloving and forgetting all the, the rest of the things. You know, it says they're traitors, headstrong, haughty, mm. lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. How do you not deny the power of God? How do you have a form of godliness? Well, it's very easy to act holy, very easy to, to wear your crosses and yeah. go to church. And, yeah. You know, anybody can worship. You see people, secular concerts, worship the, the singers that are singing. Yeah. They're raising their hands. They're shouting. They're doing all their things to worldly things. And in the church... It's easy to do the same, same thing, thing without having yeah. a heart that's, that's toward God. About the church, yeah. A form of godliness, but denying its power. Not acknowledging that God is God Almighty, yeah. creator of heaven and earth. Not acknowledging that all that we have comes from Him. Even our breath. Yeah. Even our breath. That's denying the power of God. Yeah. That's thinking that He's not powerful enough to really consider. How quick would some people, if they had a billionaire coming into their presence, straighten out and try to do everything they could to, to, to please them, you know, to impress them. But yet, a holy God, right. because he loves us so much that he wants to be in fellowship with us, he doesn't come in as a haughty God. He doesn't come as, oh, you can't touch me. Jesus came as a child, as a baby, walked around as a regular man, touched the leopards, touched the blind, fed the hungry. He was a servant. That's God. You see, it's easy to mistake somebody's authority and power when you don't see them acting like somebody prideful or showing off all their stuff. It doesn't mean that they don't have authority. I've heard it before, and I don't remember what company it was. I know that it did happen at Disney with Al Wise. He was out in the parking lot. Al Wise used to be the president of Disney. Um, and there was some papers in the parking lot. It's like he picked them up. Well, somebody saw him pick them up and it's like, you know, why are you doing that? There's, you know, there's people you pay to do that. And it's like, it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the right thing to do. To worship our God is the right thing to do. Amen. Goes on and I wrote down, don't let them poison you. Don't let them mean the world people around you. Poison you like Eve let the serpent speak a lie to her mind. Made her think she was missing out on something. God was holding back on her. Satan tried it with Jesus in the desert. But he was. Do you remember when he, Jesus said, look, I'll let you rule this and that. And Jesus just used the word against him. Mm -hmm. Don't allow the world to speak a lie to you, a deception to you like Satan did to Eve. But the great thing is that even though sin 
grabbed Eve that moment. And then Adam fell for the same, the same lie, that same deception. Like so easily that can happen to any of us. We can fall for a lie and then thinking that we're doing good, we pass it on to someone else and it not be the truth because it's not what God says. I wrote down, so Satan tried it with Jesus in the desert, but he was and is the living word, the ultimate in authority. We may mess up at times, but Jesus made a way to be able to make things right. He made that promise all the way back in Genesis 3. Even in Adam and Eve's mess up, God provided for them. Not only in the spiritual sense, but even in the material. Did you ever think of verse 21 says, Also for Adam and his wife, God made tunics of skin and clothes them. Okay. You know, it talks about not to worry about what you're going to wear because God will provide. Amen. God provided for Adam and Eve. The God that we serve is a personal God. He loves us intimately. He loves us as a relationship. He doesn't want to be far away. God, he doesn't want you to worship him like you would worship an idol. Yeah. He wants you to realize he's a loving, caring father. J.C. Ryle says this. This is back in the 1800s. It says, what a rare thing is thankfulness. And this is back in the 1800s. It says, now one, of, now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, he's giving a scripture now from Luke 17, 15 through 17, about the leopards. It says, now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine, where are they? We are told that out of all the lepers, out of the ten lepers whom Christ healed, there was only one who turned back and gave him thanks. Yeah. The words that fell from our Lord's lips upon this occasion are very solemn. Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Mm. Make up your mind uh -huh. that on. you're going to be that yeah. one. You will be that one that no matter what everybody else does, no matter what blessings God did for them and they forgot or didn't think enough to thank God, you make up your mind you're going to be the one that's going to thank the Lord, yeah. that you're going to come back. And say, Lord, I acknowledge what you did. We sang the song, Resurrection Power. Yeah. And the reason I wanted that song is because, you know, there's so much to be thankful for. I remember where God brought me out of. Uh -huh. I don't know if any of y'all do, but I surely do. Mm -hmm. And I am so, so thankful. A day doesn't go by that I don't think of where would have I been mm -hmm. had it not been for God's grace and mercy, his love, his patience on me. The lesson before us is humbling, heart-searching and deeply instructive. The best of us are far too like nine lepers. We are more ready to pray than to praise, more disposed to ask God for what we have not than to thank him for what we have. Amen. Yeah, Lord help us. The widespread thankful, remember this is in the 1800s, the widespread thank, thanklessness of Christians is the disgrace of our day. It is plain proof of our little humility. I wrote down, always looking for the blessing, but it is the one who blesses us that we should be looking for. Scripture that promises blessings. People want all those scriptures that have all these promises. I will give you this, or I will give you that. You'll lack nothing. They just want to grab those little pieces. Mm -hmm. But what about the rest of the scriptures? They don't want to hear the parts that, well, they were jailed, they're suffering, mm -hmm. sometimes hunger. Disciples ate corn mm -hmm. <laughs> out of a field one time. Yeah. You know, 
And here they were with the God of the universe. They were with Jesus. At any moment, Jesus could have. But you know what? God was teaching them. Amen. The Lord was teaching. And he teaches us. When you realize that your joy, your strength, your comfort doesn't come from things, but it comes from God, yeah. everything else just doesn't seem that important anymore. Yeah, amen. The richest person without the Lord, you can look at and feel sorry for them because you know that there's a big emptiness. There's a big emptiness. They're just going from thing to thing trying to fill a gap that can never be filled without the love of the Lord. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to satisfy and bring joy. It says, let us pray for a daily thankful spirit. It is the spirit which he, it is the spirit which he has marked. All the brightest saints in every age of the church. If we would be anxious for nothing, we must make our request known to God, not only with prayer and supplication, but with thanksgiving. Above all, let us pray for a deeper sense of our own sinfulness, guilt, and undeserving. This, after all, is the true secret of a thankful spirit. It is the man who daily feels his debt to grace and daily remembers that in the reality he deserves nothing but hell. This is the man who will daily blessings and praising God. Thankfulness is a flower which will never bloom well expected well accepting upon a root of deep humility. Billy Graham says, Thanksgiving, the giving of thanks to God for all his blessings should be one of the most distinctive marks of the believer in Jesus Christ. We must not allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our heart and chill our relationship with God and with others. Think of that. We must not allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our heart right. and chill our relationship with God and yeah. others. Nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing will do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than a true spirit of thankfulness. C.H. Spurgeon says this, An ungrateful heart is a heart that is cold toward God and indifferent to his mercy and love. Mm -hmm. It is a heart that has forgotten how dependent we are on God for everything. Amen. Paul, Amen. Philippians 4, 11, B through 13. I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Yeah. This is what he says, and this is why you can do it too. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. People yeah. like to use that for all kinds of things. Right. But right here, Paul was using it because... There were some rough times that he had to go through sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And each one of us in our lives, there's going to be those moments. There's going to be those things that take us by surprise. It's like, wow, where did that come from? And the only strength is going to come from your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where we get that strength. Linda, you know. What yeah, the things what you is that again, sister? This is uh, Philippians 4, 11b through 13. Amen. Thank you. I wrote down, are you constantly preoccupied with what you do not have? Or have you le learned to thank God for what you do have? Yeah. It's easy to get caught up in what you don't have right. and forget the blessings that you have. Yeah. They say that Pretty much the poorest person in the United States is probably richer than a lot of people in other parts of the world. That's the truth. Well, yeah. We are so blessed to live in this nation. With, even with all its problems, we're still blessed. Yeah. No matter our situation, with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
We can give thanks. Here's an example from Daniel. When the prophet Daniel learned that evil men were plotting against him to destroy him, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. I'm going to read Daniel 6. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, It pleased Darius, this is Darius the king, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120... I think you say it's the word satraps. I may be seeing this wrong. To be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors. Of whom Daniel was one. Now remember Daniel came into that kingdom as a slave. Mm -hmm. okay. He wasn't there by choice. <laughs> he was a slave there. But God even in that position raised him up was one of the three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was with him. And the king gave thought to sending him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Mm -hmm. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Amen. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They knew that that was the only way that they were going to be able to get him. Right. Is asking him to do something that went against the law of his God because then he would have to say no. They knew he was faithful and he had an excellent spirit. It says, so the governor's satrap thronged before the king and said thus to the king, King Darius, live forever. There's that praise. Praise from people can get you in trouble. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Here is Daniel's response to what happened. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. That fear of the lion's den was not going to keep him from worshiping his God. Amen. Don't allow anything in this world keep you from worshiping your God. Yeah. There is none like him. There is none that loves you more than he does. He is worthy of our praise. Nothing else in this world can compare. I wrote down, we need to flush out of our mind from the gunk of this world we, excuse me, we need to flush out of our mind the gunk of this world with the truth of God's word. Yes. That is the only way to flush out the junk of this world is with the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. The truth of God's word will give you that praise in your heart. Yeah. The more you read it, the more you get fed by it, the mm -hmm. more you feed the spirit within you, the more you'll be able to lift up praises to our God. Amen. First Thessalonians 5.27 says, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. And I'm going to start in verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Does that mean we're not going to have wrath here in this world? No. This is talking about the wrath of God. Because the day is coming when a righteous God has to do the righteous judgment. A day of wrath is coming 
to those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Those who do not accept the Lord. Yeah. I mean, the heavens declare His glory. It's obvious that there is a Creator. Right. Amen. And this week with the, the stabbing and the shootings at the school, all of a sudden, once again, there's prayer yeah. at these universities that they didn't want prayer at, but all of a sudden, immediately, that's the first thing people run to, mm -hmm. is prayer. Inside of everyone, we know that there really is a creator, that there really is more than just us. And that's why in times of need, you see people pray, although get on their knees and look up to heaven. Mm -hmm. Whether they know who they're looking up to or not, yeah. it's just an automatic reaction that happens. Yeah. It's, it's in our DNA, yes. It says, therefore comfort each other and edify one another. I'm sorry, I skipped a part. Uh, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. I mean, in the body of Christ, sometimes we need to correct each other. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a no-no. <laughs> you should not be doing that. Yeah. I heard a, a gentleman, I'm trying to, Michael Rudalic, Rudal, I can't say his name right. He's a Bible teacher. Yusuf. But he was saying, what is it? Yusuf. No, no, not Michael Yosef. Redelic, I think it is. He's always on Moody. But he says that, you know, sometimes you'll be in a situation where somebody says, starts saying some bad jokes. You know, they're, they're just crude. That as Christians, we should not be around. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, when he was a younger Christian, he used to do the holy thing. And it's like, oh, no, I can't hear those things. He says, now he just says, sorry, I'm too young to listen to that. And he just walks away. Mm -hmm. But he says, what that's done for him is, later on, it's made people come to him whenever they have a rough situation. Because he didn't cut them down. All he said was, I'm too young to listen to that. Because as a believer in Christ, if something is not good enough for your children to watch, you shouldn't be watching it either. If it's not, safe for the child, then you know what? We don't need to be watching it. Yeah. We don't need to be watching it. God is holy. I mean, why put junk in our head that is going to make you think about things that you shouldn't be thinking about? Mm -hmm. We have no reason to put ourselves in those situations. It goes on and says, I'm fully patient. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Think about those around you. Don't just think about yourself. Right. We see that in traffic every day. This morning we had someone <laughs> go from the turning lane, use the crosswalk to drive on to go to the opposite turning lane. Four lanes. Four lanes. While the light was red, he used the crosswalk to go the other way. That's not thinking about others. That's thinking about just yourself. <laughs> not considering someone could have all of a sudden decided to walk right there. But verse 16 says this. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us? It's behind you. Oh, yeah, it is the one behind me. <laughs> Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ God. Jesus. Yeah. That's God's will for us. Jesus says, yeah. give thanks in Rejoice. everything. Pray. Trust the Lord. Do not quench the spirit.
spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Mm -hmm. The Bible commands, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. I have another Billy Graham quote. Uh, Billy Graham says, thank God, especially for his salvation in Jesus Christ. Have you opened your heart to Jesus Christ? If not, turn him with a simple prayer of repentance. Come to him with a simple prayer of repentance and with faith. It doesn't have to be fancy words. All it is is just us admitting who he is. It's like, Jesus, I realize you are who you are that you suffered on the cross for me. Forgive me my sins. You may not understand all that you're saying, but you know what? God is looking at your heart, yeah. so it doesn't matter. It's the heart that he is looking at. It says, in ourselves we do not have the strength that we need to live the way God wants us to live, but when we turn to him, we discover that it is God who works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose, Philippians 2.13, Jesus promised his disciples, all the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that's found in Matthew 28, 18, and 20. In many countries, a special day is set aside each year for Thanksgiving. But for the Christian, every day can be a day of thanksgiving mm -hmm. yeah. as we are always giving thanks to God the Father for Amen. everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissip dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, yeah. speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. submitting to one another in the fear of God. W. Tozer says, Gratitude is an offering precious in the sight of God, and it is one of the it, and it is one that the poorest of all can make, and be not poor, but richer for having made it. Paul says, the Apostle Paul, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm going to end with First Chronicles 29, just three verses from that. This is King David. We've done this in the morning devotion. But I want us together to think of these words and give it as a thankful, thankful word to the Lord. Praise be to you, O Lord, God our Father Israel. God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Yeah. Oh, dear yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, implant in us that spirit of gratitude, of thankfulness, Lord. Father, let it spread from us to others. This Thanksgiving, Lord, may there be joy around our table as we just remember things to be thankful for of your blessings, Lord. That is why this nation celebrates Thanksgiving. It's because you put it on the lady's heart who told a president, Lord, to, to declare it as a special day. Lord, and because of that, we have a certain day that we use for Thanksgiving. Lord, but as a believer and as your children, we just want to say thank you. Put that 
that thankfulness in our heart that when we wake up in the morning, we may be able to look up with a smile knowing that you're yes. with us. Oh Lord, what greater thing can we thank for? Be thankful for, Lord, than to know that you will be with us wherever we go. Whatever we do, your Holy Spirit is with us. Oh, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are a blessed people. We would just realize who resides in us, who truly loves us. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to do our Thanksgiving potluck here at church. So you are welcome to join us. 10.30, we start the, the service. 11 o'clock is live stream. Um, and immediately after the service, we'll get the food set up and we'll fellowship together. So if you can join us if you're in the area, we welcome you to come and be a part. Yeah. So keep a praise on in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Matthew, come up here. Or did you? <laughs> and tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. starts the morning. Starts the morning. <laughs> morning devotion. She's laughing because I'm trying to get myself untangled from the uh, tripod there. Uh, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7. 7 a.m.